In this video, I'm going to show you how to do this really awesome ceiling fall effect inside of Adobe After Effects. So let's get into it. So before we actually jump into Adobe After Effects, we first just need to make sure that we have the right footage. And in order to do this, we just want to put our camera onto a tripod and then we just want to frame up our space. And then you just want to film the empty space. This is your clean plate and you're going to need this. So make sure you grab your clean plate. Then you just want to run into the frame and you just want to jump up as high as you can, have your arms in the air and then drop down to the floor. As you can see in my example, I'm jumping up and then pretending that I'm falling down. The bigger the jump that you can do and the more action you can have coming down, the more believable this is going to be. So once you've got those two items, you can now get these into Adobe After Effects and we can begin the editing process. So as you can see, I'm just going to first start off by adjusting this jump. So this is a jump and this is the clean plate. So in order to create the illusion that I'm falling from the ceiling, I basically want to freeze frame this layer and then I'm just going to animate that up. So that is exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm going to find the point where I start to fall down. So here, I'm going to make a cut there. So we'll go Command Shift D to make a cut. And then we'll just go one frame to the right, Command Shift D. And then we'll just go into that small one frame. We'll right click and we'll just go ahead and freeze frame. So time freeze frame and we'll just drag that over to the left and delete the jumping part of that. Then from there, we just want to zoom in and make sure the quality is set to full. Then we can go into the pen tool and we're just going to draw a mask around yourself or the person that is jumping. Now this doesn't need to be super precise, but just make sure you've done a half decent job of this. So just go around your character or the person in the frame and just draw a half decent mask. Obviously when you're doing your mask, you don't wanna do any big chunks like that because that will be seen. Just make sure this roughly follows the edges of the body. There we go. And then once you've done that, you'll notice that you can move the position of this layer and the background won't be affected. So that is exactly what we need to do. So we need to figure out how fast we're falling down. That's quite fast. So we're just gonna to go to the end of that action As you can see, you've also got the shadow here. So we're gonna to have to come back and add in the shadow in order to make this feel believable. But we'll just focus on this layer for now. So we'll just go through to the end of that. We'll go onto the full layer and we'll create a brand new keyframe on position. Then we'll just go over to the left a few frames and we're just going to push the position all the way up off screen. So we're going all the way up here. And you just want to play that back and figure out if that feels believable. Honestly, I don't think that looks believable. There's a hesitation as we get to here. So we need to speed up this part of that action. And in order to do that, we're just going to go halfway through that fall. So about here, go Command Shift and D. We'll right click that bit in the middle. So that first bit, and we'll just time stretch this to 85%. So we're gonna speed this up a little bit. That looks a bit more believable, but I think part of the problem is coming from the speed of this. So I'm just going to increase the speed by decreasing the gap between the keyframes. And that looks a lot better. Of course, though, the problem is, though, this action here just feels a little bit stiff. I'm just falling like this in the air and it doesn't look real. So I'm just going to go onto this. I'm just going to extend this by one frame. Then we'll go up into the puppet pin tool, which is this icon up here. And then I'm just going to zoom in and I'm going to create a point on the foot. Each foot, we'll go on the ankle. Then we'll go to the knees, create a new point. We'll go to the hip. Then we'll go up to the armpits, elbows, and then the top of the wrist. And then we'll also do neck and head as well. And then we'll go through to the start of that action. And unfortunately, this is gonna be very difficult. So we're just gonna to go to the left one frame and pull the position down. And now we can just make our adjustments on the puppet pin tool. So I'm just going to move this arm over to the left. I'll move this arm over to the right with the elbow. This elbow can go over as well. The head can look up. The waist can go forward a bit. The knees can go up and then we can have the feet falling like this. So essentially we're just creating a little bit of false movement here. So if we just delete that first keyframe on the position, now, if we play this back from the beginning, you can see there's a little bit more movement there. 
Of course, though, it's not exactly very dramatic. So I'll go halfway through that action. We'll go into that puppet pin tool again. So just select the frozen layer, go into effects, puppet. And I'm just going to move some of these points over even more so the knees can go over. And now when we play this back, you can see there's a bit more movement on the way down and therefore that looks more realistic. So that's starting to look good. But the problem is we've got this on the left here. We've got this shadow. So we need to progress this shadow upwards. So I'm just going to take this freeze frame again. So I'm just going to copy this command C and I'm going to freeze frame that layer. So time freeze frame. Then we'll just go over to the left again. We'll just turn that off for now. Then from there, we just want to draw a mask around this shadow on the left. So this here. There you go, that looks perfect. So now that we've created that mask, we can go into mask one and select mask path and we'll create a new keyframe on the mask path as this video comes back in. Then we'll go through to the point where the character appears off screen and we'll move the points of that mask all the way up off screen so that we're animating the shadow on the left. And then of course, we'll just increase the feathering to soften that up. And it looks like we've got our shadow now falling with us. The problem is though, is it's got a really hard edge at the moment though. So I'm just going to soften that off even more. So increase that feathering. And now that looks a lot more believable all of a sudden. So when you combine the falling animation with that shadow, it looks really believable. Now there is a flash of light happening here. And that is because we've also got the shadow on the right wall. So if you wanted to, you could add the shadow falling in on the right as well. And in order to do that, I'm just going to create a new solid. Make sure this is black. Press OK. We'll just turn this off for now and just draw a small circle on the wall on the right. Then I'm just going to go through towards the end of the action. So here to the point where I fall on the floor. I'm going to move that mask down. So I'm going to move the mask path all the way down like this. Create a brand new keyframe on mask path. Go through to the point where I'm up off screen and I'll push that all the way off screen again. Now, if I turn this on, you'll see that is following the action of the fall, but it does disappear. So we want to make sure that's on the very top. So that's now following us down. But you can see it's just an ugly circle at the moment. So I'm just going to increase the feathering to make that really soft. And then I'll just pull that opacity down even more. So pull that down to about 30, 40%. You can see having that shadow falling down with us is now making that feel a bit more believable. Of course, so that shadow feels a bit too defined. And I also feel like it should be a little bit longer. So I'm just going to create a new point here and just pull that down. And then I can just increase the feathering even more and decrease the opacity. And there you go, that feels a lot more believable. Before we carry on with this video, I first just want to take a very quick break to talk about the Brooker Films Skillshare courses. Now over on Skillshare, I have a variety of courses, including an introduction to Adobe After Effects. I also have an in-camera video transitions course, a stop motion course, green screen course, and so much more. So if you're interested in learning more about the world of filmmaking, then click one of the links in the description below. Now, back to the video. Now, if I really wanted to add another layer of drama onto this, then I could use some stock footage of some debris falling or falling debris. And that is exactly what I'm going to do here. So I've downloaded some stock footage from Production Crate. As you can see, I've just got falling debris on green screen layers. So I've just got some rocks. I've got some other debris here. So I've got some dust falling down. This could look really nice because it could look like the plasterboard has shattered. And I'm essentially just going to drop these on top of the footage. I'll just pull the scale of this down and then move that to where it should be on the screen. Then I'll just push it over so that the timing works. So probably be about here. Then I can just go mode screen to get rid of the black. And that works perfectly. You can see though this clip starts instantly. So I need to carry this down. So if I just go a few frames to the right, 
I just create a rectangle mask around that video. Go into mask one, create a brand new keyframe on the mask path, and I'll just move that mask all the way up so that this animates down with us. And again, we'll just go into the feathering and we'll increase the feathering all the way up to around 300. So that now comes down with us. Of course, that feels a little bit late, so we're just going to pull that over to the left. The timing of these stop footage elements, by the way, are the make or break. If they're off by even a frame or two, they could look completely fake. So it just takes a little bit of playing around to find the right point. And once you feel like you've found that, you should have a really good looking effect. Now I can go to another dust layer. Let's see what this one looks like. Now this one looks good because we're getting the impact on the floor. We're seeing that dust settling on the floor. So I'm going to drop this on the top. Make sure the timing works out again, and then I'll go screen. And as you can see, that's not lining up to the floor. So I'm just going to have to move this shot over to the point where it matches where I need this to go. So somewhere around here. But now you can see it's just going to appear there. So I'm just going to stretch this up. And when we play this back, you can see we're getting that coming through really nicely. I'm just going to shove this over to the right a little bit and then the layer below can go over to the left just so that we make a bit of a thicker cloud and that now looks pretty realistic. Of course though there's one major thing missing here and that is the motion blur from myself falling. I look a little bit too sharp and it doesn't look real so I'm just going to highlight all of the full layers. I'm going to select toggle switches last modes to find motion blur. I'll turn that on and make sure the motion blur icon is blue. And now you'll see as I'm falling down, I have motion blur applied and that is just helping this to feel more realistic. To make this look even more believable though, I'm just going to add some basic handheld camera shake. And in order to do that, I'm just going to highlight everything. We'll right click and select pre-compose and we'll call this falling footage. Then from there, I'm just going to go into the position. So I'll press P. Then I'll hold option on the keyboard on Mac. I can't remember the keyboard shortcut for Windows, but I'll put it on screen now. Then you'll just press the stopwatch icon and you'll load up the expression window. Now in here, you just want to type out a basic wiggle expression, which is wiggle open bracket. We'll add a little bit of drama to this. We'll go five comma 20. And then do not press enter because if you press enter, it puts you on a new line of the expression. But if you just click out of the expression window, you'll notice that has now been completed and the expression has been applied to the footage. So if we just render this out quickly and we play this back, you'll see what we have. There you go. That looks good, but it's a bit too dramatic. The camera's going all over the place. So I'm going to pull the first option down to two and we'll pull the second one down to 12. Of course, though, we are seeing the edges of the video. If I toggle the transparency grid, so if I just toggle this icon, you can see the transparency grid appearing below here. So to get rid of that, I'm just going to go into effects and presets and search for a motion tile. We'll drop that onto the falling footage pre comp and we'll change the output width to 300, output height to 300. And then we want to make sure we select mirror edges. And as you can see, it's just going to create a mirror edge of that frame. And that's going to be applied to the entire frame. So we won't see any of that transparency grid or the black layer below. And now this means we've got that really nice handheld camera movement. And we haven't had to compromise on the quality by scaling in. So it's essentially just filled in those edges with a mirror of the composition. And as you can see at this moment in time, once we render this out and play this back, we've got this really awesome video effect now complete. So if you wanted to improve on this, then you could add in some extra stock footage layers. Of course, you don't have to. Those are just a little bit extra, but I do feel like just adding that extra bit of stock footage on really does help to just finish the effect off. Now, I downloaded the stock footage elements from Production Crate. And if you do want to check out Production Crate, then there is a link in the description below. This is an affiliate link, by the way. So if you do happen to subscribe to Production Crate, then I will get a little bit of a kickback from that. But to be honest, though, Production Crate is a site that I use all the time. If ever I'm doing any VFX work or if ever I need an extra element just to sweeten off an effect, Production Crate always has something that can just round off the effect. So with all of that said and done, this is the final result. And to be honest, 
I'm pretty impressed with that. I think that looks fairly realistic. So thank you ever so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate your support and hopefully I will see you on the next video. See you there.